many of you will head out tomorrow to buy the CD or tape of some of the artists who won tonight, but other people are already listening to the music for free. Channel 3's Dee Griffin is in the newsroom now to show us how that can happen. Dee? Well, Denise, they are getting this free music through the Internet. All you have to do is type in the name of the artist and, in many cases, the song. But some people are taking it a bit farther. New technology allows them to make CDs of their favorites. But is this a threat to the CD industry? Ryan Healy has a music collection that spans the decades, from Jimi Hendrix to Aerosmith to Will Smith and he didn't even have to leave home to get it. I downloaded it and I read the instructions and they said download the uh, Winamp player, which is this thing. And uh, so I downloaded the file, turned on the player and I listened to it. Ryan is part of a growing breed of music lovers using the internet to hear the hits through websites like MP3. By tapping into this homepage, Ryan can download his favorite song and also listen to it while browsing through his favorite websites. Then, with the very latest technology called a CD burner, Ryan copies those songs onto an unused compact disc. Go to maybe the band's website, I have all the information there, like the lyrics, maybe the history of the band and maybe the tour list giving users the capabilities to create their own CDs, much like a recording studio. While users strike gold, could this leave the record industry tarnished as listeners seek out free music, avoiding the price markups on CDs at stores? I don't, know if, I don't think you can get a whole album of an artist, but if they can get a preview, like a single, or hear different tracks, it just helps, you know, album sales if they hear a song from the album. Edwin West of Record Express in Hartford says it's still not known the effects it will have on the industry. But Ryan says, at least for now, this does help his collection. I was like, wow, this is great. I can just download it off the Internet. And some music companies are joining this new wave of technology, keeping their customers. They are now offering CDs that you can put into the CD-ROM and see a short performance of the group. Back to you in the studio, Al. All right, Dee, thanks very much. Uh, Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura, have you heard, is in a little hot water tonight with the Irish. Seems members of Minnesota's yeah, Irish that. community are now circulating a petition that seeks an apology from Governor Ventura for what he said last night on The Late Show with David Letterman. It happened when Le Letterman asked Ventura which city he likes better, Minneapolis or St. Paul. Uh, Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> well... I'm, I'm born in Minneapolis. There you and besides, go. If you, have you been to St. Paul? Yes, I have. Whoever designed the streets must have been drunk. <laughs> and, you know, I think it was those Irish guys, you know what they like to do. Well. <laughs> I am the mayor of St. Paul, and I got a lot of good Irish citizens. You know, they, 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 they helped build this city, and they're part of it today. And I certainly don't want them mad at me when I'm walking in the St. Patty's Day Parade. Mayor, I know you're... So Mayor Coleman there was one of the candidates Ventura stunned with his victory in the governor's race last November. Recent studies show more than 90% of us are now eating lighter versions of our favorite foods, but picking the right one can be a little confusing. So 3 your side reporter Deborah Kent went to the supermarket with an expert for some answers. Low fat has become the mantra of the marketplace, with reduced fat versions of cookies, condiments, and chips. So why aren't Americans losing more weight? It's just really gotten out, watch fat. But the secret is that we're not watching calories as much as we should have. And we, we teamed up with Pat Froberg, a registered dietitian, at Highland Park Market to find some low-fat treasures and duds. She says for weight reduction, reduced fat peanut butter won't help. This fat is 190 calories. And is this the regular? Yeah. 190 calories. Less fat. Okay, you're getting less fat, but you're not saving any calories. And low-fat Oreos only save you 30 calories. I've had some people say to me, well, I bought the low-fat ones, but I kept eating them because I kept hoping they'd taste better. <laughs> the whole sleeve is gone, and we still decided they don't taste any better. Light cheese like this one can also be a mistake. As for some low-fat treasures, mayonnaise. Regular Hellman's Mayo has 11 grams of fat per serving versus one gram in the low-fat. So this is a good, that would be a very good trade-off, yeah. Another good choice, butter-flavored spray with no calories or fat. The one thing you have to watch for is that it's no fat or calories per serving size. Serving is one and a quarter sprays. If you're doing much more than that, you are getting fat and calories. Always a good fat-free choice, fruits and veggies. But moderation is the key. There are a lot of fillers in many of these low-fat foods that can increase the calories. Still, aiming for no more than 30% of your daily calories from fat is the best bet for a healthy, long life. Deborah Kent, Channel 3, Eyewitness News on the Night Beat.
Now, if you'd like to find out more about eating a healthy diet, you can certainly log on to our website. The address is WFSB.com. From there, you can link directly to the American Dietetic Association's homepage. And the clock is ticking, as we know, to the new millennium. Tomorrow, here on the Night Beat, see what's being done in Connecticut to protect us from the computer-induced meltdown so many people are worried about. Now, your forecast first with Miles Musio. Well, we've been talking about snow for some time, and now the low-pressure system has finally developed, and it's beginning to move. It's kind of moving a little bit closer to us than originally thought. Here is the forecast first for the next couple of hours. Look for snow to develop around, uh, probably right around sunrise, maybe a little bit before tonight. Temperatures won't be that cold in the mid-20s. And then on the shoreline, the flurries are already beginning in the extreme south eastern portions of the state. Uh, Groton should be seeing some snow uh, probably another hour or two. And then as we go into the uh, uh, morning hours, look for some substantial snow, particularly in the southeastern part of the state. Right now we go outside to uh, mostly cloudy skies and 28 degrees, 60 percent humidity to northeast wind. Temperatures around Connecticut range from the 30 at Groton to 23 degrees at Torrington, 25 at Storrs, it's 28 at New Haven. And we're beginning to pick up some wind as well, particularly in the, uh, the eastern part of the state. We have a big in fact, there's a storm uh, warning out for mariners along uh, the Massachusetts uh, uh, coastline, and we're going to see some very strong northeasterly winds. Here's what the whole thing looks like from a satellite uh, standpoint. You can see clouds are definitely moving up from the south, still basically fair to the east, but you can see the low is developing right there, and it's beginning to move to the north. I think we're going to get just a glancing blow from this. You can see the precipitation already moving in and sort of moving a little bit to the to the west, here's what I'm thinking. Anywhere from two to five inches for most of the state, but in the southeastern part of the state, four to six inches of snow. And now it's still a winter storm watch, not a warning yet. The National Weather Service will likely upgrade this to a warning, but as much as 20 inches of snow in the Boston area from this storm. Here's what we got for tonight. Look for mostly cloudy skies and temperatures uh, basically in the 20s. And for tomorrow, I'm thinking we'll see anywhere from two to six inches west to east across the state of Connecticut, temperatures right around freezing. And then on Friday, look for uh, still some snow, particularly in the morning, and then a clearing trend as we go into late on Friday. Saturday looks fine, and a chance for some rain showers on Sunday and Monday. So this uh, storm is a little bit closer to us now. It's finally developed, and now we know what's going to happen. So most of us will wake up to see some snow tomorrow morning. It'll be snowing in the morning, but the worst of it will definitely be in the Boston area and Cape Cod. They're going to get hammered. Oh, oh, boy. All right. Thanks, Miles. Well, on Grammy night, a Windsor Locks team named Darcy Morissette on the clarinet. She's a high school senior who will play this month with some of the best musicians along the East Coast. Not just anywhere, Carnegie Hall. Tonight she told us how she reacted when she got the good news. Uh, my director said he's like, you made it. And I'm like, no, I did it. I was like, don't lie to me. He's like, no, really, you did. And I, was, I started screaming and jumping up and down. Good for you. And Darcy hopes to go to the University of Hartford. We wish her well. Not related to Alanis, as far as we know. She definitely has the talent, though. Yeah, she? I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a warning tonight about a potential fire hazard that may be there right there in your home. The Consumer Alert's coming up next. A radical new surgery, an ovary transplant. We will hear from the woman who put herself through this experimental procedure. Also from the set of Gone with the Wind, some behind-the-scenes day of the day that they shot the opening scenes. Green your side tonight, a consumer alert about extension cords, cords that may have faulty wiring or loose connections that can cause fires or even electrocution. To be safe, use cords that have polarized plugs, those that have one blade slightly wider than the other, or use grounded three-prong plugs. And look for a certification label from an independent testing lab. On the health beat tonight, it's being hailed as a first, the first implant of ovarian tissue in humans. The patient, 29-year-old Margaret Lloyd Hart, suffered from premature menopause when she was forced to have both of her ovaries removed because of an undisclosed benign disease. Now, some of her ovarian tissue was preserved, and yesterday, doctors at Methodist Hospital in Brooklyn implanted it, hoping to reverse the menopause and possibly restore fertility. Well, I was in shock. My whole body was in shock. Months later, I still wasn't feeling so great. Um, and that's when I decided, well, I've got my, my ovary frozen. Maybe there's a chance of putting it back in again. 
we're not claiming that we did the procedure and it's, gonna, it's definitely going to work. And as I said, there's a 50% chance that it would work. Many doctors, though, fear this experimental surgery will only fuel false hopes. And the American Society for Reproductive Medicine is questioning why an announcement couldn't wait six months when the results would be known. Well, get ready for this. Three minutes of rare home movie footage has surfaced. It is film that was shot on the set of the classic movie Gone with the Wind. There's a hoop-skirted Vivian Lee there smoking during a break, as well as Clark G Gable hanging out by the trailer and Leslie Howard in sunglasses. The film was shot by a wealthy Iowa industrialist who happened to be allowed on the set. It was found in a basement in a, of a mansion in Cedar Rapids. What a find. Wow. All right, Joe, night beat sports. We got a lot of biggie soup here. February coming to an end, regular season coming to one final rush. We'll check in with UConn's next opponent. Can the Orange squeeze their way into the tourney? Plus, Dennis is back on the boards. Rodman gets his contract. You get the rest of it. Night beat sports is next. Tomorrow. Lots of people are finding an alternative to going to the pharmacy tomorrow morning. Find out why mail-order prescriptions are becoming more popular. Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays from 5.30 to 8 a.m. When the clock strikes midnight at the millennium, will Connecticut be ready? See the surprising problems we've uncovered and how they could affect you. Y2K, are you ready? Tonight at 11 on Channel 3, Connecticut's news station.